Right, I'm going to take you through cat rig animation in layers. So first of all, let's create a cat rig. I'm always going for 0.75 on the height because it seems to give things which are about height for a human being. And I'm going to put on some layers. Now if we go into the, select the base of the cat rig here and go into the motion panel, you have this thing called the layer manager. You can apply new animation layers here and if you hold down the fly out there you can see there's four different types of animation layer. ABS or absolute layer is what you need to put in there if you're going to do any keyframing. That will store the keyframes for any kind of animation you want. I'm going to start with a cat motion layer just so we can get this guy walking easily. Once you've got the layer in you have to press the play button to take it into animation mode and then I'm going to go into the cat motion editor which is the little paw print button click globals and then change it to walk on line and we'll see now that this guy walks along which is nice, but it doesn't do much for us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some obstacles in the way of this guy. So let's start off with, stick a plane in. I'll follow it a bit further than that. And I'm also going to put in a tube for him to walk through. So let's do that from the front viewport. Build the tube and put it start about there with the size of the tube and make it just slightly bigger than the ground and then bigger again. And then don't forget to drag again to get the length of the tube. It's slightly longer tube than that, so let's modify the length and then move it down. Stay about there. So now you can see he needs to duck down to get through the tube. <coughs> so we're going to do this with animation layers. First of all, I'm going to select his pelvis. Now his pelvis obviously needs to lower down for him to crouch through there. But if you look at all the keyframes I've got here in the timeline at the bottom, you'll see there's a lot of keyframes to edit. And if I've got to adjust each one of them so that it's so he's lower down when he goes through the tube. It's going to be a bit of a pain. So this is where animation layers come in. Go back to the motion panel. And I'm going to add another kind of layer here. We'll do a plus W. This plus means it's an adjustment layer and W means it's working in world space. So I'm going to walk up towards the tube to about here. We want him walking upright to about this point. Uh, put auto key mode on. And I'm just going to click the key button there to create a, a solid key there of the position, rotation and everything else of the pelvis. And I'm going to keep walking through and at the point where he's completely in there I'm just going to lower his pelvis a bit by F3 so we can see inside. I'm also going to move the pelvis forward a little bit so he's got better balance. Now you can see the only two keyframes I've got on the timeline at the moment are those two keys I've just created. That's because we're creating the keys on a different layer to the original. If I go back to the original layer, you can see all those keyframes are still there. I go on to my adjustment layer and you can see that I've got a very, very simple adjustment on there to enable him to crouch down and walk through the tube. And when he gets to the end, that's the point at which I want him to stop crouching down, so I'm just going to make a copy of this key, shift and drag it all the way along, which means that he's going to stay crouched down for that amount of time. And then when he gets to the very end, I'm going to make a copy of this key to put him back in a standing up position. 
You'll see now he crouches and he wants to go through the tunnel. So I'm going to put on another adjustment layer to adjust the rib cage. This time I'm going to choose a plus L layer because it's an adjustment layer, that's why it says plus, and L means it's in local space. So I can change this here to local space. That means that I know I'm operating on the correct uh, axes when I use my gizmo there. So I'm going to walk him up to the point where he starts crouching down and I'm just going to put a set key in to lock in the rib cage position at the moment. And then when he gets to the tunnel, by the time he gets there I want him to have bent over somewhat. You can see it's put in a new keyframe there. Notice the arms adjust back afterwards. In fact, he bangs his head before he goes in, so perhaps I need to just move that keyframe back a little bit to get him ducking a bit earlier. Quite a lot earlier, in fact. Let's move both of them back, back a bit like that. So he starts bending top first. His pelvis as well. Let's go back to the pelvis one. Pelvis and move this keyframe back. There, so he's ducking down nicely now to go through the tunnel. I'll go back to my uh, rib cage adjustment layer. Select my rib cage again so I get the keyframes back up, and exactly the same as I did before. I've got that keyframe there, so I'm going to duplicate that one. So that's the amount of time that he stays crouched down. And then I'm going to copy this one across to the end. And that's the amount of time he's going to stay up. You'll notice as well that I haven't actually gone to any effort to put the keyframes on exactly the same position. That's because I want to get some nice overlapping motion so that his pelvis and his rib cage work at different times. Now final thing is just to name these layers so that it makes a bit more sense. So I select the first one there, the world adjustment layer, and I'm going to call that one pelvis height. And then this one here, I'm going to rename that one Rib Cage Bend. And now I've got a completed animation. Let's play that through. If we x ray this, we can see through it better. That's Alt X to x ray. Very good.